Um, awesome. So today I'm going to do a little bit of live coding, a little bit of review as necessary that comes up in the live coding. We're also going to have some of you guys come up and live code yourself. So everyone in the room will get the chance to live code. Um, and don't worry, when you're live coding, this is a lot like what's done in a lot of companies called pair programming. That means that if you make mistakes, it could be that your partner, in this case the whole class, can help you fix that mistake. And no matter what mistake you've done, some programmer has done it before. I can guarantee you, advanced programmers, beginner programmers, everyone's made that mistake before. So it's good to see live a few common mistakes. The first thing I'm going to start out with, and I'll add a little section in the textbook about functions. There was a little confusion, um, and I think that this is probably because we didn't explain it very well, about functions. So if I want to define a function, how do I define a function? Start with what, Naya? With the DS. DS, okay. And then what next? Nico? Okay, what, what should I call my function? Generophone. 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 Fun. Generophone. Like a function. Oh, oh, yeah, like a function. Yeah. Funct. Uh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> and two parentheses. All right, awesome. So we'll just start out with that. And I'm going to have uh, it's a function. Okay. So we've now defined a function, genera funct. And a lot of people were trying to, when you define a function, you have um, the function definition and what it should do. When you go ahead and use the function, that's also called calling, evaluating, a variety of different things. If you don't tell it to use the function, all it's going to do is use the definition and not even try to do anything. So here, if I don't tell it to use the function, what is this? It says it's a function called genera funct. If I want to use it, I need to have parentheses. And after this, I'm going to show you a more advanced concept. So I know some of you guys got this already, but we're going to do a more advanced concept in a second here that I haven't taught you yet. So now that I give it parentheses, what's it going to do instead of telling me that it's a function? What? Well, it's going to do the print command. It's a function. Okay, cool. So here's the more advanced usage. Um, so why do you think Python does that? Like, why not just have this automatically called a function? Um, why do we have to have those parentheses? What's the point of that? Does anyone have a guess about what the point is? What do you think the point of that is, Nico? So you can modify it or understand what it is? Modify it, understand what it is. Those are all good ideas. What do you think, Will? It's a parameter. Um, no, genera funct is not a parameter. It's a function. So no parameters. Oh, in, in the parentheses, it's good because if you have any parameters, that's a good point, you're going to have to put those parameters someplace. And if we don't have the parentheses, where are you going to put the parameters if that wouldn't work? You know, you need the parentheses if it had parameters. One interesting reason, uh, genera funct call it, um, we can assign a variable to a function. So I can say new func oh, yeah. function equals genera funct. Then if I do new function, it'll say, oh, I'm actually a genera funct. That's what I actually am originally. And then if I want to call new function, how do I call or evaluate new function? What am I missing here? Parentheses. Parentheses. That's right, Naomi. There we go. And one of the reasons for this is I'm going to make a new function. I'm going to do it def um, Nayeli function. And this one I'm going to print hi Nayeli. Okay. So now. I can even put functions in lists. So list of functions. Functions equals, and we can put genera funct there, and we can also put Nayeli funct there. And now we have a list of functions. Okay? 
And this is, again, mixing in some advanced concepts with some more basic concepts. But if I do a for loop over list of functions for f in list of functions, I am going to try to call f. Yeah. So what do you think this is going to do? What's it going to print? That's right, hopefully. Or it's going to be a giant error and I'm going to be embarrassed. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so this is one of the reasons why Python makes you say you want to call the function. Because otherwise, generifunct, if we called that up in list of functions already, it would have not been a function, but it would have actually used it. Um, and right now, that's, this will probably return an error because it doesn't return anything, or it's going to be none, none. Um, so now list of functions will be none, comma, none, I think. Yeah. And that is because neither of those two functions returned anything. They were evaluated because we, the parentheses say, go ahead and call the function. And then this says, put in here the result of what it returns. Put in here the result of what it returns. Neither of those functions return anything, so they have none as their return values. But when we put the parentheses, it went ahead and evaluated each of the functions. So that's why we see it's a function in high Nielli. Whereas if we don't call them, if we instead say that we just want this list of functions to be an actual list of functions, then if I print that, now we have two functions in there instead of none, none. Do you have a question, Nico? That, that's right. So I think that that was on the same point that Will said about the parameters. Um, if you didn't have parentheses, then every single time you had parameters, you would need parentheses. And only once in the universe, if you had no parameters for your function, would you not need parentheses. So that's not what I mean. I mean, like, every single, like, each type of variables are fairly interchangeable, I guess, and you're kind of similar in how they work. Uh, I just, it's hard to explain, but I just find it explained with fairly consistent. It uh, makes sense. Variables and functions and things are extremely similar. Yeah, it, it makes sense because a variable can kind of be anything in the world. And you sign a variable to a function, you can then use the variable with the parentheses to call the function. You sign the variable to the result of the function, then it'll give you the return value of the function. So this, now let's redefine, let's make a new function. So I'm going to do def function, I'm going to do add, add numbers. And I'm going to have two parameters, x and y, and I'm going to return x plus y. Hey, not x plus y. Oh, that's a bug. Good. There we go. x plus y. We can redefine it. <laughs> so then I'll do another one called multiply numbers. And that I also has a typo. Multiply. Multiply. There we go. Okay. Oops. And y. There we go. <laughs> okay. So now if I call multiply, multiply numbers, five times four. What's five times four? That's going to return 20. And then if I add five and four, what's that going to be? Uh, nine. Nine. Okay. So now if I have multiply numbers, 5 comma 4. This is now a list. What is that list going to be of? Charles, what do you think? 9 and 20. Cool. Um, so if instead, I'm not going to call the function, we're just going to use its name, what is that list now of? Someone up front. Victoria? Yeah, 
the function. So now we have the add numbers function and the multiply numbers function. And now I can do a for, and I can call my variable whatever I want. I'm going to do it, well, I was going to say fu, but that, that would probably be bad. So let's do fun in <laughs> L. <laughs> if I do print fun, what is that going to print? Anyone else? What's that going to print? It's going to print the list of those functions. So it's not going to print the list because the list is L. So it's it's not going to print this. So how many lines are it, is it going to print? How many lines do you think, Sterling? Is it going to print? Pardon? You think two. And that's a good that's a good thing to remember. Whatever your sequence is that you choose for your for loop, the number of times it's going to go through that sequence is equal to the length of the sequence. So if your sequence is of 20 items, it's going to go through 20 times. If your sequence is of 40 items, it's going to go through 40 times. Here it's going to go through two times, and each time it's going to print on a new line um, that this is a function. Um, so we have the add numbers and we have the multiply numbers. Um, Wait, that's the, that's the address, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so there, it, it does tell you actually what this does in the back of the computer is it's actually setting the function at a particular place, and every time you go and use it, it goes to that place and says what's the function. Oh, that's what it is. Is it possible to uh, read? Um, so in Python, you can always also have C code. So in C code, of course, that's very easy. To do that in Python, they purposely make that very hard because they don't want you to do that. Um, so now instead, if I want to, instead of printing that these are all functions, that's not very fun. Um, let's go ahead and call each function. So if I want to go ahead and call one of these functions, what do I need? So I want to evaluate. Um, we're going to keep the print there, but after fun, what do I need? To, uh, what do you think, Tiffany? Print and? Parentheses, yeah. You can print and, but like that. At the same time. So um, we need parentheses, and then what else do we need? Sierra, what, what else do I need here? Yeah. Um, so you, you say I need the number of functions. So what would that number be? Two. So you think two. So let's try two. Let's see what happens. So it says we need two arguments for add numbers, and we only have one argument. So do you have another idea, Sierra? Pardon? Add another number. So how do I do that? What should I type next? Comma. Good. And then what else? Okay, so now we're going to go, remember our functions were add and then multiply. So what is this going to print? A five and a six. So let's see if that works. Nice. Very good. The print is printing the result of the function. So if I... That's right. Uh, we've now returned something from the function. So, so you're right in that before our functions were just printing, now our functions have return results. So if we remove the print no, there, it doesn't do it. it. It is evaluating the function every time, but we're not doing anything with the result. We're not displaying the result. So that print basically means display the result. And our add numbers function before, um, it doesn't print anything inside of add numbers. We could make it print something inside of add numbers if we wanted, um, but we don't have to. Um, okay. Um, so we are gonna uh, 
move on from that digression on functions. And I'm going to open up the textbook paper. Uh, go. And over here, I'm going to come up with a list of stuff to play around with. Okay. So we've been working with some functions. Um, who wants to try live coding a function? Anyone? Nico, come on up. Yeah, if you want to plug in your keyboard, I think hopefully it should just work. No, it should work. I used it online. Yeah. Yep. And just ask you uh, yeah. Z and the uh, and C. Okay. So now try to type Work. Good. Okay. So why don't you, Nico, make a function of five variables, and your function of five variables should return the maximum of those five variables. I have a question. Can I do this? That's a good question. So yes, you can do that. Yep. Uh, but each statement, um, each of those, and this is a great question, each of, each of these things between the and has to be a Boolean. Um, so what this is actually checking right now okay, okay. is... Oh, well, oh, that makes a lot more sense. Yeah. I just wondered if I had to type Yeah, so each of the tests, that's right, yeah. That's right. I won't make you do all of them, but finish up this path. So, no, in this I'm just case, think, I'm, just th I'm just thinking on how I can make it more efficient. Yeah, I, I will give you a hint after you finish. Because I need to make sure. Because what if two variables are equal? That's right. I so, have so many, so many possibilities. Yeah. So I'll give you a, I'll give you a hint in a second. But for now, um, if this is the case, what do you know about v1? I know that. Uh, v1 is larger than all five other variables. So they then we're fine if do something should return the biggest number, then you're fine here returning v1 in this case, right? Because v1 is guaranteed to be bigger than everything That's else. That's the point. I didn't realize it was, uh, it was not equal to. Okay. So um. in reality, you'd need a lot more if statements because you have to check v2, v3, v4, v5. There's also this subtlety, as you mentioned, what if V1 is equal to V2? That sort of stuff. I think it might be good idea to make a function, a subfunction that does it. That's right. So what I, will, what I will do is I will give you a hint. Can I cancel out of this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, and then we'll try again. I will give you a hint that there's a function that Python has built in called the max function. Oh. That if you give it a list of items, like four, six, Wait a minute. 15. I know how I can write that function. I know you also know how to write that function, but for now, you'd be fine with using the function. So what is this going to return, do you guys think? I call this function. 15. There we go. And what if I have two 15s? What's it going to return? Just one 15. And there's also a function called min. 
that's just built into Python. You don't have to import it. It's part of Python. So that returns 2. And then if I have a negative 15, what's it going to return now? Negative 15. So my hint to you would be to make your do something, just use that function. Um, but am I returning the largest number or the index of the array? I, I, I want you to return the largest number. Yeah. That's what I want you to do. Yeah, yeah, this will be boring now. I'm just going to write the function. Yeah, yeah, It'll yeah, be yeah. more interesting if I do that. It's boring to just wrap it around. Oh, oh, the so wrapper. Please do do the wrapper just because I want to give everyone a chance in the yeah. class. But in lab after this, you're welcome to do this with your own sub function. That would also be boring. Okay, and now can you call your function with that same list of numbers? Four, six, um, four, six, uh, let's see, 15, minus 15, eight, two, <coughs> maybe that's too many numbers. We just need one more number, two. <laughs> okay, so let's. Okay, awesome. Uh, everyone give Nico a round of applause. Good job. <laughs> yeah. The, so that's a good question. Um, so the problem with uh, just writing max, and I don't think that this will work, but, but we'll try it. Four, six. I realize your question is slightly different, but I'm just going to illustrate why you wouldn't want to do this. So that also does work, apparently. So you can actually give max. You don't even have to put things in a list. Um, so that, <laughs> so Python will let you do it either way. Um, I usually do it as a list just because it's clear. The reason why you don't want to, whenever you define your own function, you really don't want to use a function that's also used in Python. For example, I'll show you this. Def max. Uh, a, B, C. Now I'm going to return min A, B, C. Now let me see if I take the maximum of 2, 15, and minus 3. We would think, based on what we know about Python, that that should, and the name, that it should return 15, right? No. <laughs> So, Python lets you make your function call whatever you want. But once you call it something, if Python called it something else, your name wins. So, it's a really good idea, and you can sometimes have a really difficult bug to find if you reuse a name that Python has taken already. Um, and, in fact, these names are called reserved. So, Python will let you try to do that, and sometimes there are cases where you do want to do that. Um, but it's very dangerous because unless your function works exactly as Python's function, you should just use Python's function. And if your function works different than Python's function, it's going to confuse everyone. Like in this case, when, imagine I secretly did this in your computer, when Nico's gone to the bathroom or something, I redefine max, and then Nico goes to use max, and it's returning minus three. You couldn't do that, I remember. I know. I couldn't do that because Nico always lost his computer, which is a good idea so that your evil instructor doesn't come and redefine Mac on your machine. Um, so it's a really, really good idea, again, to use unique names. Um, and we're learning the names along the way. And until you, until you realize what names are in Python, um, you can always make your maximum a longer name, max of three. And then you could have this really weird definition of max or whatever. Whatever you want, it could have a bug in the code, doesn't matter. Um, but that's one of the reasons why just having a short name um, has a danger until you learn Python really well of colliding with the Python name. How do you, is there a way to access each of the arguments of a function like, without having to set them out? Like, 
Yes. Yeah, so there is a way of specifying a function, and this is often done in classes. Um, I don't know if I can do this in real time because I often look up the syntax, but def f of uh, arbitrary, arbitrary args uh, for i in arbitrary args. I don't know if this will actually work because... Okay, so F, let's do 2, 3, 4. And ideally, this should print 2, 3, and 4 and not complain. Nice. Or I could do 5, 6, 7, 8, and then we'll print all of those. So this is the way, and this is, again, advanced usage. Um, yes. Um, so that star basically tells Python, hey, don't worry about how long this is. It can be zero things. It could be 20 things doesn't matter, um, you can go ahead and let me use this function. Yeah, essentially. Um, so that's, again, advanced usage. But let's go back, um, and uh, who else wants to try some live coding? Everyone gets a chance. So. Stephanie? Um, okay, so could you write a function that takes as an argument uh, two tuples, they're going to be tuples, and prints the first item of each tuple? Uh, my, my computer is kind of weird. That's why it was good that Nico had a keyboard. I, I will think about this before bringing people up. My, I have a Swiss keyboard, actually. You would appreciate this. Why don't you just uh, change the keyboard layout? I have changed the keyboard layout. So that what I was about to say is that the keyboard layout is actually American. So don't look at the keys. You have to look up and think where the parentheses are. Wait. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so well, it's I, printed... I, I, I want the American no, the keyboard that you look at is Swiss, but the keyboard that you type on is American. <laughs> but if it's, if it's okay, do you think we could borrow your keyboard for the live coding? Would that be all right? That's awesome. Thank you, Nico. So I'm going to plug in this keyboard, and this keyboard you can look at and type on. And next time I will bring a keyboard. I didn't think of this. Okay. So <laughs> yes. <laughs> Exactly. should call it on. So let's call it on two tuples. One should have um, six, seven, eight, and the other one should have one, two, three. So that looks like it, it did the right thing? Yeah. Good job. <laughs> um, Okay. <laughs> I, will, I will bring a better keyboard next time, but that's part of the extra challenge. <laughs> okay, so we have a couple functions. The next thing we're going to do is just creating tuples and lists. So I won't make you do a function. I'll be creating a tuple, a list, and then after that we'll work with some dictionaries. So who wants to work on creating a tuple or a list? Nayeli? It's you. <laughs> you got this. Come on up. Okay. 
Okay. So the keyboard might look a little weird. You just look at the keys. It's a regular keyboard. What am I supposed to do? I will tell you. Um, could you create a a list um, called Nayeli of um, the even numbers from 0 to 10? Is it the right brackets? Yeah. Um, so now, that's, yeah, we will, ha we will do that at some point, but this is, this is good. And now could you print your Nayeli? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Cool. And now could you print the third item in Nayeli? Awesome. And oh, yeah, that's a good point. So it was the the six. So uh, yeah, we're off by one. Yeah, that's a good point. So we <coughs> let's let's focus on Nayeli right now. Um, so awesome, good job. Um, now could you create a tuple? Um, called Miko. And then what we want is, um, and by the way, if there's any mistakes, let's wait and then we'll give some hints. Um, we want the odd numbers from 0 to 10. And now could you print the fourth item of Nico. All right. Awesome. Let's give everyone <laughs> Nayeli a round of applause. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> so um, just a couple hints on some of the things. Uh, next week, we will learn a little bit about um, what's called um, coding conventions, where Python will let you call a function whatever you want, um, but Python as a community, and individual projects might change this, but as a community, they've decided that they want their functions to have lowercase, and when you want to separate two words, to have underscore, and that's considered good Python style. Python will let you do this. Um, you don't uh, need to worry about not being able to do that, um, but you will see a lot of Python code will use with a function, instead of naming it with, with capital letters, they'll use all lowercase and separate them by underscore. And then we'll meet something next week called classes. And with classes, they name it exactly like this, where everything is capitalized, only also the first word is capitalized. And if you keep to naming things like this, it's really easy to tell the difference between the two just by looking at how it's written. Python will... Pardon? Yeah. Yep. Um, so the other thing is, uh, and here's another hint. Um, if you have a function, Python will let you put a space before the brackets, or the, the parentheses, in which you put the arguments of the function. And you always need to call the function, you always need those parentheses, whether it has any arguments or not. Um, Python will let you put a space, but it can be confusing because what does that look like if I just have that? It looks like a tuple because tuples start with parentheses. Um, and so it can get a little confusing. Um, if you don't put your parentheses right up in, against the function, if you're just reading this real quick, you can be like, oh, Nayeli is a tuple, instead of Nayeli is an argument to the print function. So it's, again, good style, um, and Python will let you, uh, just like a parent who, like, gives you some advice, but lets you go make your own mistakes, Python gives you, we have some advice, but you don't have to do this. Python will let you do something else. Uh, if you put it like this, 
that means it's clear it's not a tuple. Wait, wait. Isn't that kind of like a tuple since you can have multiple arguments separated by commas and they're not modifiable since the function is not? There are some elements in common, but a function is not a tuple, ultimately. They're different. So I mean like the end of it. Yeah. There, there are some similarities between arguments and tuples, um, but in the end, the arguments are not implemented as tuples because, in fact, you can uh, tuples are immutable, and we can change the arguments of Nielli. Um, so it's it is slightly different. Yeah, but you can't change the inside the function. Why is it kind of immutable That's why it's like a tuple. You can change it from within the function, but what? If you change something from within the function, it has no impact on outside of the function. If but you can change it from within the function. Yeah, we can uh, watch. We'll do this. Uh, we'll make a new thing, first and second. And now I'm going to do uh, first equals temp. <laughs> temp equals our, our second equals temp. <laughs> uh, first equals second. Um, and now first item is going to switch those two. And see, we've changed the arguments from within the function. We've assigned second to something else. We've assigned first to something else. Um, assigning first would very good. Uh, that is true. That's a typo. That's good. So first, this should be temp equals first. <laughs> and that actually would have crashed. So. Uh, first. Second equals temp, first equals second. So whenever you, um, and we caught that very quickly, whenever you're assigning something, whatever's on this side has to exist. This, you can create your own universe, you can name your new names, your god or goddess or whatever over here. Over here, whatever you're assigning to has to exist. You can assign it to none, but none exists in Python. Um, if this doesn't exist, if I assign temp equals magical unicorn, a magical unicorn isn't defined anywhere. Python is going to say, I don't know what I'm doing. So I can try that. Temp equals magical unicorn. Magical unicorn isn't defined. But if I first create a magical unicorn, which I'm allowed to, and because I'm a Python teacher, I'm going to make it a tuple instead of a brilliant, sparkly horse that's imaginary. Um, then, if I try to do this, it'll let me do it. So on the left side of the equation, you're always allowed to define your own name. Doesn't matter. On the right side, it has to exist. Um, so, anyway, with the first item, first item, we're going to now call this, and now it's switched the two. So before it printed six and one, and now it should print, uh, you should print it. No return there. Okay. Then I have to still do the uh, return first, zero, comma, second, zero. So you notice if you ever call a function that you think should have a result and it says none, that means you probably forgot a return statement, um, which is certainly possible. So now, oh, uh oh, good. We have another bug. First. Okay, temp equals first, second equals temp, so second should now be first, and first equals second. Okay. That's right, yeah, yeah. First equals second should be before. Good, okay. This is in the wrong order. This is that assignment puzzle that we had to do the first week. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense uh, to, yeah, hold on a sec. Now second equals temp. Now return. Let's see if this now works. One in six, hopefully. Yeah, good. Okay, so here we had a function where the principle I was trying to illustrate was that we can reassign once you're inside the function, first and second, to whatever we want. Um, and in typing quickly, I made two bugs. So the first bug, we found out when it returns none. 
And how we fix that bug? How did I fix that bug? Add a return statement. The second bug was that it returns the wrong thing. It returns six and six when we expected it to return one and six. And I fixed that by fixing the logic of my code. So those are two different types of bugs. One bug is it returns the wrong thing. The other bug is it didn't return anything at all. And the third type of bug might have been a crash or an error. Had I tried to do first equals temp there, that would have been the other type of bug. Um, let's see. So this is now making this into buggy code. So temp, first equals temp, and it doesn't know what temp is. So it'll let me define that, and that's fine. I haven't used it yet. It's not a legal statement. Um, it's not illegal to make. But then when I go ahead and use it, uh, oh, I know why. Temp was somehow assigned to something else in my, um, in my environment. I don't know where I assigned that, but pardon? It was in unicorn? Okay, that's why. So my temp was my unicorn. So print magical magical unicorn. Yeah. So again, I had reused a variable. So temp does, in fact, exist. So Python didn't complain about that. So I need something that doesn't really exist again to illustrate this point. How do you undermine That's a good question. So I can do a del temp, and I think this will work. And that undefines it, essentially. Temp equals none doesn't undefine it. So we'll try this. And now we'll try calling it. And now hopefully it should be an error. Yep. Now it complains because temp doesn't exist. Um, so again, this can be a subtle bug because inside the function, it's using a variable that I define, assigned outside of the function. Um, so anything I assign outside of the function, um, let's try this if I've done this first. So first is only defined inside of the function. But since temp was previously defined outside of the function, the function was able to use that. Um, so anything you just define inside of the function is not allowed to be used outside of the function. So we define first and second inside the function. You can't use them outside. But anything outside of the function is allowed to be used inside the function. So right now, temp is, again, not defined. But if we define it, um, so let's define it to be uh, 3, 4, 5. Now it's defined. So now I can use that function and it'll know what temp is, hopefully. Now it knows what temp is. Now if I undefine temp, now it'll complain. So again, that's a subtle point that the function is allowed to use variables from outside of the function, but any variables you create inside of the function after the function's gone, don't exist anymore. They just kind of exist in their own little world. Um, so I don't know a good analogy, but a function could be like, um, you know, you're inside a house, you have a private house, but you can look outside and you can see the world. You can see the rest of Caltech. But Caltech can't see inside our house. So we're able to say, oh, you know, the tennis courts are over there, you know, this is over there, we can see all that. But we're in here. So if we make something in here, like you make a cake, people outside aren't going to be like, they have a cake in there. You know, that cake's private to you. It's just your cake. <laughs> you know, people outside can't see in, but you know about the rest of the world. So I can reference tennis courts and whatever, but people in the outside world, you ask them, like, do they have a cake in there? They'll be like, how should I know that? That's their house, you know. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good analogy, but like inside the function, if you bake a cake, if you do whatever, it's yours. It's your house. And then when you step outside the house, no one else knows about it. They're like, whatever. But inside your house, you can reference the outside world. You can say the president, and people know who you're talking about. That's not private, so everyone knows that. OK, let's do another live coding. Let's do a dictionary. Who wants to try a dictionary? Everyone gets to go at some point. Uh, I can pick, ooh, I can do this. We can, okay, import random. Uh -oh. 
So we're going to do the random dot choice module, and then it chooses from the class people who haven't gone. So Will hasn't gone, Sterling hasn't gone. Sorry for not capitalizing your name. Um, Victoria hasn't gone. I. Uh, Annie hasn't gone. Um, who else hasn't gone? Momo. <laughs> and Charles. Who else am I missing? Part Adriana. Yeah, of course. And Sierra. I misspelled your name, Adriana. Sierra and Crystal. Actually, I'm going to first define a variable that's the class name, because I might want to use this again. So this is our class. Have went. We're missing Nico and Tiffany. So since two people have gone, our class have went, how long should that be? It should be 10 if two people have gone. So maybe I'm missing someone. Okay, so who am I missing? Oh, Nayeli went, so three people went. Good. Okay, so now I can do random dot choice. Our class have went, have not went, it should be. Um, so, Adriana picked you. <laughs> would work. Yeah, so we might have to do that for other classes. <laughs> um, so, um, could you, of the our class have went um, list, even though it's have not went, um, I want a dictionary where each of those people is a key to that dictionary and the value is false. I don't really remember how to so the first thing would be, ha let's just create a dictionary of yeah. any sort. Should I just call it that? Sure. Yeah. Or can I call it our class? Or that sounds good. Okay. Yeah. Or no. Where are the brackets? Yeah, you do need the brackets, so you're right there. Let me see. They might be, uh, let's see. On the right. Oh, okay. oh, we see him. We see him. There we go. Okay. Yeah, she found it. Yeah. Okay, so, um, I just list people. Yeah, but let's just create an empty dictionary for now. Okay. No, no, that's fine. Um, so let's just create an empty dictionary, a dictionary with nothing in it to start okay. out with. So there's that's fine. Like colon. Yeah, that's good. Okay. I mean, you don't need a colon. Okay. Yeah. So now you can just push return. That's an empty dictionary. Okay. So do you know how to create an empty list? Uh, do so do L equals and and then make an empty list. Okay. Oh, oops. There we go. Now push return. So that's an empty list. And then what about an empty tuple? Call it T. Yep. And so um, let's just start out with one thing in the class. Um, so could you change, uh, we want our class, we want the key of will to be false. Oh, the our class have went? No, just, oh. just will, the, ignore the our class have went for now, okay. but we want our class, we want the key of will to be false. The dictionary part. So just I don't know. I don't know. Try it. Push return. We'll see. Okay. So yeah. we have invalid syntax. Um, so do you remember how to access a key from a dictionary? You have to put quotations. You have to put quotations. So let's start out with that. So what would you put quotations around? You can use the up arrow to get back what you just had if you want to. So 
So what would you put quotations world. around? What, it would be world, right? Okay. Yeah. So we have a couple more things. Could you go ahead and just type false just as you did there and then push return? So it doesn't know what false is. Do you know how you would fix that? Um, I, I can I, uh, can write it to a, bool, a boolean? So it should be a boolean, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll let uh, the person. So anyone, um, what what is wrong with that false? There's a typo. There's one letter. Oh, it has to be capital. It has to be capitalized. So try typing false with a capital letter. Okay, so that's also a good thing. If you now type, try typing will without quotations and see what it says. Mm -hmm. Not the will equals, just the oh. will. Oh. Yes, just that. So if you have an incorrect syntax error, if you have a few different pieces of it, you can first try to make sure those pieces are okay. And here, now we've fixed the pieces. Now try will in quotation marks. Awesome. Um, so let's use the up arrow to get back everything. And let's, let's fix the false to have a capital. And then try it again. And there's still going to be an error, don't worry, but we'll fix that too. Um, there you go. So let's try that. Um, so that's invalid. Um, whenever you access a member of a list, a member of a dictionary or a member of a tuple, you use a different kind of bracket to get at that, that member. So in this case, you want to use a different kind of bracket. Okay. Um, but the only thing is our class is the one that I named. Am I supposed to be choosing from our class? How Eventually. We're, right now, we're okay. just going to set one person in our class to be false. Okay. So later, I'll, once we get this one person, then we're going to do a for loop for it. So right now, we just want to make sure that will is set to false. The key of will is set to the value of false. So we'll use the, this to access That's right, yeah, values. yeah. And then the key of will. So we're almost there. Push return. We're, we're almost there. So we're almost there. Uh, let's gradually learn things. Um, so now we've fixed a bunch of errors, one by one. And the reason why we're fixing one by one is from each of these fixes, we as a class can learn something. Even if you don't have this bug now, I can guarantee you you'll get a sim similar bug sometime in your programming career. So seeing it one by one is a good, useful thing. So there's one more thing that uh, we're doing wrong here, and I can give you a hint that the, the bracket, the right bracket, is in the wrong place. So you have to move that right bracket. So you can uh, use the up arrow again, and then try to make your own guess about where to put that right bracket. It, it's not like this. I'm not sure if it's like in Python, but in C, what that would be doing is it would be accessing uh, the index of our class, which is will equals false. So whatever that occurs would be accessing. So this is just invalid syntax. So Python doesn't even let you try to do this. So now push return, and let's see what happens. Okay, now print our class. No, 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 it's fine. You're good. No. Um, so one thing at a time, and now push return. Um, so great. Now I want you to set uh, Sierra to be false, too. Okay. So you can use the up arrow and kind of change the code if you want. And Sierra is with one R. And it's an S. Yeah. Okay. And now print, uh, push return. Now print our class. OK, awesome. Um, so everyone, give Adriana a round of applause. Good job. And I think um, 
I can guarantee you, again, any of these errors, um, you will get also as an advanced programmer. You'll get them as a beginner programmer, you'll get them as an advanced, um, because sometimes you're typing quickly, you think you've got it, you do a bunch of things, you'll get an error like this at some point, and kind of knowing how to go through it one thing at a time. Um, so what did we see here? Um, with dictionaries, again, it's the same as sort of with variables, um, the thing on the left doesn't have to exist yet. The thing on the right always has to already exist. So the thing on the left of the equals, our class Sierra doesn't exist yet, but we're, we're setting it to false. Um, so we're allowed to do that. If we tried to do it to something that didn't exist, like unicorn, then it would complain. Um, but I'm allowed to do unicorn equals magical horse. Because uh, even though our class didn't previously have it, what's on the left, I can kind of create it on my own. The only subtlety is that this is just with dictionaries. If I try to do that with a list, um, L, I think, is a list, so L0 doesn't exist. So it doesn't like that. Doesn't like that. Won't let me do that. So it's only if uh, you can use an append item. We could say L.append5, which is add 5 to L then L has 5 in it, or you can do plus equals another list, then we'll have two fives. There's a variety of things that you can do with lists. So it's only with dictionaries, and that's kind of what part of this exercise was meant to illustrate. Only with dictionaries, the key doesn't have to have existed yet. You can set it right there. And so in the end, the idea there was to our class have went um, we could do uh, our class as a dictionary. Um, so I'm going to, uh, for person in our class have went, um, I'm going to do dot, yeah, that's right. And then I'm going to update our class person to be false. And now our class will have everyone. I think unicorn's still in there. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, and then we'd, we'd want to update the dictionary now. Um, now, since Adriana is gone, we can change her to true. So, how would I change Adriana to true here? What's the next thing that I type? Brackets. Okay, and then what do I put in between the brackets? Adriana. And then what do I put after the brackets? True. Pardon? Equals true. Equals true with a capital. And now if I print our class, um, we have uh, Adriana is now. Okay, so that's the live coding today, and everyone give an especial hand to Tiffany, Adriana, Sierra, and Nico. All those guys were awesome. <laughs> and more random choices next Friday. <laughs> so we'll just do the random choices for coming up in live coding on Friday. So you don't have to worry about that every single day, but Friday it'll kind of be a little demonstration.